All right, here is another example. Suppose a train, and they gave us an image. Uh, let's just assume we don't have an image. We're going to create our own. Accelerates from rest to 30.0 kilometers per hour in the first 20 seconds of its motion. What is the average acceleration during this time interval? So to do it the proper way, we are going to have a start point. So this is a big old train, you know. I don't know, there's like some smoke coming out of it. A bunch of wheels. You know, caboose and all that other stuff. Anyway, this is the starting point. What is their starting position? X zero, right? And since it's at rest, we know our starting velocity, our initial velocity, Vox, is going to be also equal to zero. Um, I guess it's important to note that the figure they gave us um, think it was anyway we're gonna do it this way plus is gonna be over here minus is gonna be over here that's our coordinate system uh, this train is accelerating from rest at 30.0 kilometers per hour uh, or from rest two kilometers per hour 230 rather so this is the time interval we are focused on from start to here right that is going to be our time interval of 20.0 seconds our final velocity or our velocity at this time right is going to be 30.0 kilometers per hour and the average acceleration is what is asked of us. What is the average acceleration during this time? Well, we don't know. We're going to find out. So that's just like the basic setup. I think we're assuming constant acceleration here. So we'll just have relatively even spaced. Yeah, something like that. All right. So we got our picture drawn. We got our locomotive, we got our starting position, we got our ending position as far as what we're looking at, we got our time labeled, we got our final velocity or, or our velocity at this time labeled, our initial position, our initial velocity, things that we don't know. What are our unknowns? We don't know our acceleration, we don't know the distance traveled, right? Not that that's asked of us yet <laughs> keyword yet um, and we don't know no I think that's it so if we bring up our equation sheet we are trying to find one of these four first four equations that fits of the bill again we're trying to find acceleration So we're going to have to use, we're, we can already skip the first one. There's no acceleration to be found in there. We know, or we don't know X, right? The total displacement, the final position, and we don't know acceleration. So we wouldn't be able to use this first one. This next one, however, has Vx, right? That's our, our final velocity. is going to equal our initial velocity. Well, we have both of those plus acceleration of x. We're trying to find that. And time. Well, we got our time. So that's going to work out beautifully. We're going to go ahead and paste that in here. Again, if you're not familiar, 
write it out. Makes it really easy. Final velocity of x. Initial velocity of x. It's going to be plus our acceleration. You got it of x. And that is going to be multiplied by time. So if you're not familiar with using these, these variables or what they are, say it out loud, write it down, literally do exactly what I'm doing with paint or on paper, label them out until you're comfortable. And then from here, we can plug and play, really. Uh, our final velocity we know is 30.0 kilometers per hour. And that's going to equal our initial velocity, which is zero, plus our acceleration. We don't know what that is, but our acceleration of x. And that's going to be multiplied by time, which is 20 seconds. From here, it's simple algebra. We're just going to solve for ax, right? This basically doesn't exist because it's zero. Acceleration of x times 20 seconds. To isolate that, we're going to divide each side by 20 seconds. Those cancel out. Divide, divide this by 20 seconds. Or, sorry, 20.0 seconds. Now, to rewrite it, you should have the acceleration of x is going to equal 30.0 kilometers per hour over 20.0 seconds. Now, these units are different. We have hours and we have seconds. Also, remember acceleration should equal meters per second squared, not, so not kilometers, right, per hour. That, 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 that doesn't work. So we have to use a little dimensional analysis for this. There's a bunch of different ways you could do it, but what I recommend is instead of trying to combine them all and getting crazy, we only like crazy on the weekend, right? 30 kilometers per hour. We're going to multiply this. We're going to get kilometers to meters, and we're going to get hours to seconds. So to do that, we're going to have one kilometer on the bottom, and we're going to have 1,000 meters. 1,000 meters and 1 kilometer, this equals 1, right? So they cancel out. Uh, well, this is just 1. Multiplying anything by 1 doesn't change anything, right? But it does. Kilometers cancel out. We're left with meters. Perfect. Now, we're trying to get hours changed into seconds. Well, you could do this in one step, or you could do it in two. I like doing it in two, so I don't get confused. Um, we're having one hour. How many minutes are in an hour? There's 60, right? Notice I'm writing out hours and minutes so I don't get confused. Um, hours cancel out. Notice how they're on opposite sides, denominator, numerator. And then we're going to go into one minute. How many seconds are in a minute? You got it. 60 seconds. Minutes, units are canceling out. What is this going to leave us with? This is going to leave us with meters over seconds. So meters 
over seconds. Well, let me give myself give myself a little more room here. Meters over seconds is going to be our final unit. And from here, we're just plugging and playing. So we have 30.0 times 1,000, right? And then we're going to divide that by 60. Then we're going to divide that by 60 again. And hey, we're left with 8.33333 meters per second. Since we are, since we have three significant figures here, we are going to round to three. So that gives us 8.33 meters per second squared, or s meters per second, sorry. That's only this value here. We have to rewrite our equation now equals 30, oh, not 30, 8.33. This will be meters per second over 20.0 seconds, right? You could have skipped a step here, right? You could have just multiplied this if you just kept going by, you know, 1 over 20.0 seconds, right? Um, but people tend to mess up their units that way, so... That's why I'm doing it this way. Uh, when we divide meters over seconds by seconds, guess what? That turns into meters per second squared. Now we just have to do 8.3333333 divided by 20.0. And that gives us 0.41. Six 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 six. Um, since we only have three significant figures, and both the numerator and denominator will end up rounding it to four one seven point four. Oh, my chemistry teacher gets mad at me. Shoot, <laughs> you have to put. Let me redo this. You have to put a zero. Then a decimal, 417 meters per second squared. That is our final answer. Let's see how we did. Trains accelerating, derp, 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 derp. So, yep, they identified their knowns. VO, that's the initial velocity, is zero because it starts at rest. The final velocity is given to us 30 kilometers per hour, and the change in time is going to be 20 seconds from zero to 20, 20 minus zero, zero, or 20. Um, they calculated the change in velocity, which again is 30 minus zero, which gives you positive 30. That's a step I forgot that I really need to. Is there a problem? Jeez. Need to get in. But again, they got the same thing we did. 30 kilometers per hour over 20 seconds. Since the units are mixed, they decided to use dimensional analysis. They turned, and they used scientific notation here, and they did it in three steps. Um, they just kept 20 seconds on the bottom. They multiplied kilometers over meters, a thousand meters or 10 to the three. That's going to give them the, their meters. Um, and then they took hours at the top and multiplied it by three, because there's 3,600 seconds in an hour. They didn't do minutes, two seconds. They just did it all in one. Props to that. That gives them their meters per second squared. Or sorry, that gives them their meters per second at the bottom. Since there's 3,600 seconds at the bottom, and that's multiplied by 20 seconds. That's where they got their seconds squared on the bottom. Remember, that can be written as 0 0.417 meters over seconds squared. Same thing. But they got the same thing. Looks like they rounded correctly as well. Um, 
Yeah. And now we're going to, I mean, we could do the same thing with the other one. Are they doing anything differently? Slows the stop from a speed of 30.0 kilometers per hour in eight seconds. What is the average acceleration while stopping? Okay, we can do this one. This is just a little bit different. Same thing, only a little different. New paint. So here we're saying, suppose that at the end of the trip, the train is in this figure slows to a stop from a speed of 30.0 kilometers per hour in eight seconds. What is the average acceleration while stopping? Well, we know we got a train. Draw the smokestack first. Pollution, coal, yay. Um, <laughs> so bad at drawing. Bunch of wheels. It's going this way, and it will eventually stop here. Um, as it's traveling, though, this is where the velocity is getting closer and closer and closer and closer. We'll just say it stops here because I drew it too many times. Perfect. So what do we got here? We got our initial 30.0 kilometers per hour. That is going to be our initial velocity of x. 30.0, it'll be kilometers over hours. Our time, right? So we're looking at the time to stop this train moving. It's going to be 8.00 seconds. We know the final velocity, right, because the train stops, it ends, it stops moving. So our final velocity of x is going to be 0. They are asking for acceleration of x, which we don't know. We're going to figure that out. And the other unknown we have is distance right and that's referred to as x so we don't know our x0 our initial position and we don't know our just x or x final right same thing we don't know that and we don't know this i always like to write all of those unknowns because it helps it really it really helps figuring out like which equations you're supposed to use um, knowing what we know now, we're trying to find acceleration again. So this first equation ain't going to help us. There's no A here, right? So, yeah, we're just going to skip that guy. Um, the final position or displacement is going to equal the initial position plus the initial velocity times time plus half of the acceleration of time squared. This one does have acceleration, right? We're trying to find that. That's cool. But it also has more unknowns. We don't know x or displacement, and we don't know x0, which is initial position. So we have three unknowns. That ain't going to work. We got our tried and trusty final velocity equals initial velocity 
plus acceleration of x times time. Well, we know we have time. We know we have initial velocity. We know we have final velocity. This one's going to work out perfectly. Let's do it. Let's go ahead and slap her on down here. Again, you can label these if you're not comfortable, but final velocity equals initial velocity plus the acceleration times time. So this is pretty easy. This is plug and play, right? Our final velocity is going to be zero, right? And that's going to equal our initial velocity of 30.0 that'll be kilometers per hour plus acceleration of x guess what we're trying to find that times time uh, we're supposed to put check marks here we know we know we know don't know. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um, oh, and then time, right? We, do we know time? Why did I do that? Our time is 8.0 seconds. Algebraically solving, we need to isolate AX, right? To do that, we're going to subtract 30.0 kilometers per hour to both sides. We're also going to divide both sides by 8.00 seconds. That's going to get complicated. We'll do it over here. So we're going to rewrite after dividing, or sorry, subtracting each side. So we've got negative 30.0, and that'll be kilometers per hour is equal to, so remember this cancels out, acceleration of x. times time, which is 8.00 seconds. Well, if we divide each side by 8.00 seconds, we are left with a of x, or not a of x, it's functions. The acceleration of x is equal to negative 30.0 kilometers per hour over 8.00 seconds. Same thing as the last problem, right? You have an issue with seconds and hours not lining up. Also, remember, acceleration should be meters per second squared. We're in kilometers, right? So we need to we need to fix this. Thirty point zero kilometers per hour. Oh. Remember that same thing can be written as like one hour. Right? And first let's 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 do hours this time. That needs to be seconds, right? How are we going to do that? Well, there's one hour over 60 minutes. And then there's one minute and 60 seconds. Hours cancel out. Minutes cancel out. We're left with seconds, which is perfect. 
now that we're done with one unit, let's fix kilometers, right? We need to multiply this with kilometers on the bottom, one kilometer. We need to go to meters. We know there's a thousand meters in a kilometer. So now kilometers cancel out and we're left with meters. So I'm going to re Yeah, I'm going to rewrite this. Just just make it easy. So we got 30.0 meters. Now, that's going to make it more complicated. Let's not do that. We'll worry about units later. 30 times 1,000 divided by 60 divided by 60. See how that works? That guy, that guy, that guy, that guy. So if we do all of those, which you can do in just one, one fell swoop, 30.0 times 1,000 times, I'm sorry, divided by 60, divided by 60, gives us our funny number here, 8.33. We're going to use three significant figures here because we have three significant figures right here. And that unit is going to be meters over seconds, right? Because we got meters, we transferred kilometers to meters, and we then converted hours to seconds. So that is our bread and butter. 30 kilometers per hour is equal to 8.33 meters per second. Now, if we go back to our little thing over here, you're going to notice we still got to do something with this 8. So let's rewrite it. Acceleration of x now equals 8.33 meters per second over 8.00 seconds. What does this mean? Well, seconds are going to go and join their other second buddies, because that's how math works. And we're going to get, for our final unit, meters per second squared. Wow, that's exactly what we wanted to get for acceleration, right? Units look good. Now we just got to take 8.333333 and divide that by 8.0. That is going to give us 1.042. Just kidding. Just kidding. It's actually 1.016, right? But remember, we're only using three significant figures here. So our actual answer would just be 1.04 meters per second squared. Right? Let's see how we did. All these are in the chapters, right? So you can do all these yourself. Um, there's a bunch. The ones at the end of the chapters don't go to like the the experimental side because it, it gets it gets weird. Maybe I'll try it again. All right, so they identified their initial velocity as 30.0 kilometers per hour. The final velocity, like we said, is zero because the train is stopping. Um, time, 8.00 seconds. They added a step here that we should have probably done, but it's pretty simple. The change in velocity, right, is going to be, oh, no, we did do this one. Well, kind of. We solved it. Uh, the final velocity minus the initial velocity. So the final velocity being 0 minus the initial velocity 30 gives us the negative 30 kilometers per hour. They're using average acceleration equals velocity over time. 
yes but the equations we used came from our sheet and we'll, we'll kind of get into that a little bit of how it's evolved right because you're just algebraically changing like you could do the change of t equals the change of v over the average acceleration it's just changing where the variables are but essentially they got the same setup as we did negative 30 kilometers per hour over eight seconds they had to convert it to meters per second and they ended up getting negative 1.04 so that's a step we actually missed if you see I put negative 30 kilometers per hour here but I didn't in my conversion and I lost my negative sign so that is something to be careful of and probably reread the question follow your picture and be like if velocity is this big old number going this way right um, acceleration because you're slowing should be the opposite way a much smaller number but um, yeah anyway goofed I goofed something to look out for like I said I'm running through these as well so I'm gonna make mistakes and if you have questions if you have tips let me know so I'm not struggling as much um, then we'll get into the next example